Welcome back to the Wizard Shop and it's Aventador LP750 time. It's a supercar that had a super common issue that was super not easy to take care of. Let's take a look. But before we dive into that really sweet Lambo, let's take a look at some of the shop updates. So you guys have seen this video in the past with Danielson taking off the cylinder heads. We upgraded the rocker arms to roller rockers. We did a lot of small upgrades and the customer supplied most of the parts. This thing's back together. It runs perfect. Everything went well. Very happy. As opposed to the crazy Jeep situation. This time around, we did the work and it turned out very well. The only downfall is the spark plug wires that came with this car when it actually was dropped off. Some of them have tiny little pinholes in them and they're leaking spark out, causing a slight misfire. If, if the wires just angle just right, it'll start misfiring. I've got a new set of wires ordered and we'll get that taken care of, but otherwise this thing purrs like a kitten. It runs so nice. I'll start it up for you guys real quick. It sounds very good. It sounds just like a Viper. V10s have their own weird sound. It doesn't sound like a 12 or an 8. It's kind of a strange sound, but it sounds really good. As soon as we get these wires taken care of, get the bonnet back on and do some final checks, this Viper will be going out the door. Another happy customer on a Gen 1 Viper. So that was a quick little update on the Dodge Viper. It's not really worthy doing a whole video on, but give you guys an idea where we're at with it, and it's almost done and almost out of here. This one just arrived the other day, and it is so sweet. It is a 2016 Lamborghini Aventador LP 754 SV. Can you say all that three times fast? It is a very special model, one of 600. There's a lot of things inside this car and about this car. It's very fast very special. It came in because the customer has been having some glitches with the transmission or it would, it would stall or it would act kind of strange. He would get out of the car, maybe do a few things and start it back up and it would be fine. We all know with the paddle shift transmissions there can be error codes pop up or things go on wrong with the system that can be so expensive and the customer was worried about that. This thing hasn't even hit 10,000 miles yet, not even 5,000 miles on it. We did hook the scan tool up to this car. We have an Autel MS908, and it does communicate and scan all the modules on an Aventador. We did a full system scan and went through all the different modules, and there were multiple faults, and we kept seeing low voltage. Low voltage, no communication with this module. Low voltage, no communication with that module low voltage into this module and we've all been there before haven't we guys we just did a video on a Maserati Quattroporte that was doing the same exact thing looking at those codes it could make you want to cry you're like oh my god this whole thing is ruined what is going on there are so many errors in this car is it the ECM is it the did it have a meltdown it's not but we got to the bottom of the problem, we found out what it was, but before we take a look at that, let's take a look at this. Look at the beautiful face on this car, guys. Obviously the hood is off, and we'll explain that in a minute, but it is so, so beautiful. This is a matte silver, and it has a protective coating, kind of like a clear bra, over the entire car, all of it which is wise, it protects the finish, protects the paint, and keeps the value up. And as we get to this wheel, we can see inside, those are not metal brakes, those are carbon ceramics. They should last a very long time, and I hope so because there are thousands and thousands for the rotors. Another thing you might see, no lug nuts. The center cap comes off, kind of like a race car. 
that is really, really cool. This is a special, special car. And as you can see, it says Aventador SV 1D600. That means one of 600. A very, very special model. As we go down this side, you can see it has a little bit of dust on it. I think the customer might have gotten into a part of the road where there's some dust or dirt on the road. It's not a big deal. But there you can see the carbon fiber. You can see it has a clear bra on it as well. Kind of hard to see, but it does have one. And you can see right here it says SV. It looks like a little zigzag, but it actually says SV. And we come around to the back. We have a beautiful rear diffuser down there. Quad exhaust in the middle. The quintessential Lamborghini arrowed tail lights. It looked like little arrows pointing. Here's a carbon fiber wing with also a clear bra on it. Look at that beautiful glass. It's a work of art, guys. It is so beautiful. You can see the V12 engine in there. I'll uh, pop the trunk, the bonnet, the hood, whatever you want to call it here in a minute. There are a lot of things on this vehicle that are reminiscent to me of an F-117 stealth fighter jet or bomber, whatever they're called, also the B-2 bomber. And a lot of those zigzags and type of panel fittings to where they fit together is very reminiscent of a fighter jet, a stealth fighter jet. They have a lot of that on it. It's really cool. We'll show you that when we open the hood. Here we are again with SV. You can see down here, LP754 SV. It means all wheel drive, LP750, and is the SV model. Here's some more of the trapezoidal or triangular design to it. Kind of like a honeycomb almost. And of course it carries through on the front clip as well. Let me get the rear hatch open for you guys. We'll take a look at that engine. One thing that's really neat about the rear hatch on this is that there's no secondary latch or anything. Once you pop it from the inside, it's ready to go and it comes straight up. There is our V12 engine that has 740 horsepower and 508 pound-feet of torque. This beast can do 0 to 60 in 2.8 and the quarter mile in 10.8. It's in the tens, guys. Absolutely a speed demon. One thing I commented to Mrs. Wizard not the other day also is how the suspension, the struts, are sideways, front and rear. They're not up and down like a standard car. And that conserves space so they can do other things and manipulate the, the building of the car. We can see the AC compressor down there is not driven by a belt. It is similar to a Gallardo. It is driven by a kind of like a power takeoff shaft. This is not like your Murcielago or Diablo where it's belt driven and the belt is such a pain to get to. This one has the AC compressor ran off of a shaft. So it's kind of like they're going back to their farm days and using farm technology with the PTO? Kind of. It's that way of thinking, I guess. You do see a serpentine belt there, but it's not near as hard to take it off and work with it like it is on a Murcielago or a Diablo. You can see down there all the coil packs are easy to get to. It's not hard to do that at all. It does have four electronic throttle bodies, which is also on a Murcielago. There's our oil tank, since it's a dry sump system. And here's our exhaust back here. Obviously you guys probably already could figure this out. But these are definitely the type of cars that after you're done tinkering or whatever you need to do, you don't just grab the bonnet and go WHAM! Look at all that glass, guys. Do you want to break that? I don't. So here's how you do it. You wait till it contacts the latch. Then you lightly push. That's it. I have told my mechanics that work on these, and they already know, but I just reassure with them, if I catch you slamming the hood on one of these, I'm going to slam you. Do not slam anything on these cars. They're very delicate. There's carbon fiber. There's fiberglass. There's very delicate materials. They do not bode well to slamming things. 
Let's take a look at this interior, guys. It is amazing. Wow, ladies and gents, look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is beautiful. A full digital dash up there. No dials, nothing up there, but isn't that just beautiful? We've been in a lot of cars together, and this is nothing like what we've ever seen before. It's great. If you look there underneath where it says low oil pressure, because we're, again, we're not running the car, so it has no oil pressure. But if you look down below there, you see all the gears. You see that there's 2,103 miles on this thing. It has absolutely nothing. So, and you can see this is amazingly beautiful. I am absolutely surrounded by a dark charcoal gray Alcantara. The dash has it with red stitching on it. They love their black with red stitching because my Maserati Levante, also an Italian car, has that as well. Again, we've got tons of carbon in here. Look at all this. It's just beautiful. Lots of controls here. Lots of things that you can adjust and get to. Here's where they hide our start-start button under that lovely little red shield there. It's looking good. Got a lot of different options we can choose for our drivability and for our creature comforts of temperature and music selections. Check out that seat. These have amazing bolster. It feels like you're getting a hug in here. The sides on that, look how deep this is. You fall into here. This is not an overly graceful car to get into. It does have quite a step. So if you look over there, you can see that there is quite a bit of distance between the door jam to the floor. There is, so it's not really a very graceful car to get in and out of, I'll be quite honest. But once you're surrounded by all of that carbon fiber, You've even got a beautiful leather strap to help close the door because it's all the way up in the air. And again, we've got the safety feature of a fire extinguisher. I don't know if that's a good reputation to have for a car or not, but it's in there and let's keep it safe. As we look at that seat just one last time, we'll do see that there is the SV stitching in it as well. And again, we have no back seat. We have a little cargo net, that's about it, which is the closest thing you get to a glove box in this car because that is what is holding his car's registration in it. As we look through the hidey hole there, we can see there is the engine. Not a very big rear view mirror, and these cars have never been very graceful to try and back up in anyway. One ironic thing that I'm noticing, you can uh, latch system your baby into your Lamborghini if you buy one of these. So, you know, you rest assured that if you need to get the baby to the daycare center in, you know, under 10 seconds in your quarter mile, there you go. You can strap them in safely. As we look at this headliner, you'll see that we have more of that red stitching. We do have a lovely carbon wove design up here. We also have leather in the center. And there's a shocking amount of headroom in here as well. Lots of Alcantara on the trim pieces, on the up here around our lights and our, I guess our garage door openers, and our very tiny, tiny little reverse opening goes up, ooh, goes up and down this way. Very tiny little visor. But when you've only got a narrow, view like this, a little visor holding down blocks out quite a bit. So it's really pretty good. As we end up here at that steering wheel one last time, yes, that is an Alcantara steering wheel. Isn't it beautiful? Red stitching, red leather in a few spots with a beautiful bowl here in the center. This thing is really sweet. I'm excited to see what this looks like up in the air. So there are a lot of YouTube channels out there that you get to see LP750s and all kinds of Ferraris and Lamborghinis, all kinds of crazy stuff. But you actually get to see underneath them on this channel. That's what's really special. With only 2,000 miles on this car, I don't expect to find a whole lot. And based on the fact that it looks smooth as an airport runway under here, there's really not a lot to see. But we'll take a look. So here we have a giant panel here. You can see our front differential. It lets some air in through this scoop, kind of like an airplane. 
to keep that nice and cool. It even has the stickers still on all the parts like it just came off the assembly line. You can even see the mill marks on the control arms. They're still shiny. It's so new and so pristine. Very, very nice. Obviously nothing's loose in there. I'll give it a good tug here and make sure. Nope. Go to this side. Brakes are like new, obviously. Nothing loose there. Everything looks brand new. Here we can actually see some carbon fiber. You can see it starts here and works its way back. There's another air scoop that lets air in. Another one here as well for cooling on the transmission. The transmission is right here. It's not forward like a Ferrari back there. It's, it's actually under the driver's seat almost in the middle. Here's our big engine access panel with more air scoops. You can see our oil pan there. More scoops again. This is the rear differential and then you can see the other one, the oil filter. And look at these wheels here. Everything's looking brand new. Same thing on that side. Really not much to speak of as far as looking for damage or anything broken. Okay, so Car Wizard, it looks like there's a lot of stuff that we could get to under there, but how much work is it to get to the engine or get to those tires, to get to the brakes? How many screws do you have to take out? There can be a lot of them, like this engine access panel. There's these little round Torx head bolts or Allen bolts. Yeah, they're Torx. You have to go through and take these all out and this center piece will come out. It's actually not too bad when you get everything off as far as panels. Yeah, it looks like here's the ones right here that release to the end of where you're at, way down there. Yep, and then this center panel, you can see more of them that would go to a panel that allows you to get to the transmission. And it all is sculpted with an air diffuser as it comes out the back so that air is in a stream laminar flow coming out the back. Nice and smooth. And here we have our quad exhaust. I imagine two of them are for a normal quiet tone and then the other two are valved so when you get on it it opens those up and lets it roar. Look how wide these tires are Mrs. Wizard. Wow that looks almost like dragsters at the drag strip. Yep big wide tires. You got to get all that power to the ground. And this one's all-wheel drive, so it uses all four wheels. Well, let's get this thing on the ground. So you guys remember in the Maserati video we did not too long ago, this guy had all kind of troubles and error codes, and it was like the end of the world was coming, all because of the battery. And that's exactly what happened here. Let's take a look at this battery. So this is the battery that came out of this Aventador. This is the stock VW Auto Group from July of 2016. This is the original battery that was brand new in this car a little over five years ago. So we've mentioned many times that the lifespan of a battery, whether it be AGM or lead acid or it doesn't matter what technology it has, four to five years, maybe six. This one is at the fifth year mark. And that totally makes sense with the problems that are going on here. If you test it with our Medtronic's tester, it tests good. But just like on the Maserati, it tested good as well. But these systems don't monitor full volts. They monitor tenths of volts. And during cranking or high power consumption, or you're getting on it hard, you're racing hard, and anything that's pulling a lot of power, if the voltage threshold drops just a tenth or two below a certain limit, there's alarm things. Basically, alarm bells go off. Modules start freaking out. They're saying, oh my God, something's wrong. The voltage has dropped. I'm shutting down communications right now. Things start acting up really weird. In any other car, that's probably still a good battery. But not in this car. It, it says, hell no, I don't accept that. 
I won't work with that battery. Let's take a look at what it took to get it out of there. We're used to batteries being in really weird locations in cars, underneath the seat or in the trunk or some, some weird locations. But this one, it's not so much weird, but it was kind of hard to get to. As you see, the front trunk lid is missing. And it's up there in the loft, just like you guys know, I put all very fragile things up there so nobody's tripping over them, knocking them over, kicking them. Out of sight, out of mind. If you try to take this trunk tub out with the bonnet top or trunk lid, whatever you want to call it, still in place, it will hit. It won't even allow it to come out. So this has to come off, which is already off, in order to do this. And there we can see our new die-hard AGM battery, H5 is the style of battery that goes in here. These battery systems do have what's called a super capacitor on them and that is for high load situations. It can really give a jolt if need be, especially during starting. We were able to put a stable power on this while we were changing the battery out from our battery charger so that it would keep battery voltage present so we don't lose our calibration settings with the transmission or anything. Swapped out the battery, hooked up this one, took our stable power off, and it was happy. While we have this open, we'll take a look around. Just like I mentioned, it has sideways struts. There's the Olin's struts there. Here we have our sway bar. Here is an air conditioning pipe. That is the receiver dryer which is very easy to get to once you get those, once you get the tub out. Here you can see duct work for cooling the brakes on the Murcia Lagos. There's actually a flexible hose. But these have nice plastic pre-molded duct works that go right to the brake rotors. And to get to the headlight assemblies here, you could take this panel off and you can get to the back and get to the bulbs. So that's pretty much it for this car. All it needed was a battery. It'll take care of the situation it was having with low voltages all over the place. It was quite a deal to get down to the battery. And even though we weren't doing anything extensive to this beautiful Aventador, we definitely wanted to get a video in to show you guys some of the sweet cars that come through the shop. This one's no exception. This is a very awesome car. It is beautiful. You guys just saw for yourself. It's an amazing car. We'll get this tub back together. We'll get the lid back on and give a couple road tests and make sure everything's good to go and then this one will be out of here so if you're curious what kind of tools we use to get this tub out check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below we get a small cut and we really appreciate it and make sure to hit the subscribe button guys because there are all kinds of cool stuff coming into the shop all the time thanks for watching